What's the word, y'all? It might as well be snowing in this room because, ladies and gentlemen, today is my Christmas. From today until mid-June, I will do nothing but consume an extreme amount of basketball, and I will enjoy every single second. Listen, I love the NBA offseason, but the last month of it is always so dreadful. So the fact that we are back in the swing of things is going to be amazing. And I got to keep the tradition alive and give y'all my award predictions you know what i'm, I'm low-key a perfectionist whether it be through life through video through my job i'm a perfectionist so when i was creating my list of players that i think win mvp and most improving yada yada i was trying my hardest to get the perfect perfect players so i went back and i watched my last year's predictions guess what y'all i got one thing right so so that kind of eased the pain a little bit when trying to create this list because it don't matter if you're right or wrong right now. It's just an avenue for me to talk about some players. But if I do get them right, that is when I gloat in y'all face and say, I am great at my job. And if I don't get them right, who cares? You know what I'm saying? So this should be amazing. So I mentioned to y'all that we were going to have a presenting sponsor for the entirety of the 2021-22 season. And I am excited to announce that that presenting sponsor is prize picks they took daily fantasy and simplified it i need y'all to hit the link in the description download the app use the code kenny because they are matching all deposits up to 100 dollars. that's exactly what me and the homies did we put 100 in and now we had 200 dollars to play around with but if you aren't in tune <laughs> let me showcase exactly what it is now the app could not be more simple for y'all right you pick two through five players and you decide based on the stats you see if you want to go over or under it's you versus these stats so for example kevin Durant versus the bucks on national tv he won a little bit of revenge i see that 30.5 and i'm gonna go over on that so he is one of my picks and you know what hey i'm gonna go over for everything man i think this should be two really good games there are two different ways you can play it though because you might not believe in Giannis's three-pointer that ain't no problem because if i play flex if i get just three out of my four correct i still walk out a winner now if i get them all right I'm, I'm 5x, but if I get three out of four, I'm still walking out on top. I got my homies involved. We have a league. We made a prize picks pool, and it is a full group chat. We're doing nothing but competing against each other. So the way this works, we all started off with $200. Well, basically, we started off with 100 then we used Coke Kenny, and it turned into 200 You know the way it goes. And we're going to tally to see who wins the most every single month. Whoever wins the most every single month gets a big prize, and whoever wins the most for the year gets an even bigger prize. So Demil started off saying, I'm gonna teach y'all how to flip 200 to 200K. We have to laugh at that one because if anybody's gonna make that flip and it's gonna be me. So y'all might be in the same boat because this is their first time hearing about this app. And again, they didn't get paid to be in here. But Derek says, I like this app, LOL. And somebody emphasized it. I like how you can win when you don't hit everything. So the flex play is huge. I need y'all to hit the link in the description, sign up, use the app and use code Kenny because they are matching every single dollar you put in up to $100. Again, Price Picks is going to be a presenting sponsor around here for a long time. So I need y'all to get in tune and I need y'all to tweet me y'all picks every single day because I'm curious to what y'all thinking. Let's get into awards. Okay, like I said, I, I thought a lot about this, but I didn't go too hard while I'm like, I have to necessarily be right. We're going to start off with my sixth man of the year. Yeah, I'm not going to start off with a big thing. I need you to go ahead and watch the entirety of the video. My six man of the year. Some of these things I have like sleeper picks and some of them I just ranked one through three, right? My sleeper picks for six man of the year. I have one homer pick for the entire thing and this is the one I think makes the most sense. It is Alex Caruso for six man of the year. Um, Some of that might get taken away once Kobe White comes back from his injury, but everything I saw from Alex Caruso on the preseason Again, it's just preseason, but he showed what type of player he can be for us. And I think a lot of that is moving the ball. He's going to average over 10 points per game, in my opinion. He's going to get a lot of assists. He's going to play the floor and be super impactful. So he is my one sleeper pick. And then the other one is actually a guy that got an extension uh, yesterday, so shout out to him, is Kevin Herter. Now, a lot of people have him winning, but the reason he is just a sleeper for me is there are so many players on that team coming off the bench or just overall that are going to get shots. You have Kevin Herter. You're going to have Bogey. You're going to have Gallinari. Cam Reddish. There are so many quality, quality scores on that team that I'm not sure if, if Kevin Herter is going to have the ability to get all the shots off. I also struggle with six man of the year because I wasn't completely sure who was going to start on some teams, but those are my two sleepers. Hey, this is about to get super interesting, by the way, because I think some of my picks are kind of wild. Maybe not necessarily six man of the year, but some of my picks, once we get upper up on the list, you're gonna be like, Kenny, what? 
again, it, it should be interesting. Uh, my three picks for six man of the year. The first one is Jordan Clarkson trying to get a repeat. In six man of the year history, a lot of people get the repeat, get the three piece, stuff like that. If you can score a bunch of buckets, that's the way you win six man of the year, in my opinion. And that's why Alex Caruso is a sleeper, because I don't think he's going to score nearly on the level of Jordan Clarkson. And when you think about six man of the year, for the most part, it is like a Jordan Clarkson type dude. It's Lou Williams. It's it's Montrez Harrell. These are players that have come in and give you 16, 17, 18 points per. And um, I think I don't think Alex Caruso can do that. Jordan Clarkson definitely, definitely can. Definitely wouldn't be surprised if he ended up winning the award again. But I don't think I have any repeat winners. I don't have any repeat winners actually winning it. They might be in contention though. Number two on my list is a dude we talked about yesterday when we were talking about the Miami Heat. And it is Tyler Hero. Um, I, I, again, I don't want to overreact or think too much about the preseason, but he looked good. He looked like he got a swagger back. He's got a confidence back and they're going to really look to him to be an off the bench scorer because they don't really have that type of player in their second unit other than him. He's going to close out some games. He's going to do a lot of things this season, in my opinion. And that is my second pick and my last one. Maybe this is a homer pick too. It's Derrick Rose. Um, what they rely they relied on him heavily in the playoffs last season Um, they don't necessarily have to do that anymore because they have uh, Evan Fournier coming to the team RJ Barrett should be better They have um, they have Kemba Walker on the team now, but as far as six men bucket getter goes Their bros can be exactly that so those are my picks for six man of the year Um coach of the year doesn't really matter to me here are my top picks Frank Vogel Monty Williams Steve Nash Okay, let's keep it moving only thing I think somebody else can win it. Um, I, I'm thinking about a team that's going to end up top of the conference is one option for coach of the year, or the second option is being a team that came out of nowhere like the New York Knicks last season. Um, and I don't know if that team exists. I could be wrong because, I mean, I mean, I mean, they're coming out of nowhere. Nobody's expecting it, right? Um, so is it JB Bickerstaff? I don't really know. Let's talk about most improved player. This was the hardest one to pick for. So, so I went back into history. Over the last seven years, six of the uh, most improved player candidates end up being all-stars the year that they got it. So I have Jordan Poole in conversations, but I don't think, I think Jordan Poole's gonna take a huge step, but I don't know if he's gonna take the step to make an all-star appearance. Everybody else that has won this award recently jumped up to be an all-star. And they were players that were already good. Everybody knew that these players were good. Julius Randle was good two years ago, but he elevated himself to be really good. Brandon Ingram was already good. He went really good. Pascal was good. He went really good. Jimmy Butler, Victor Oladipo, these are players that already had a reputation of being quality NBA players, but hit the next step, okay? So I have a few players here. My sleeper pick, OG Ananobi. Um, I think OG Ananobi is going to be really solid. We're going to talk about the Raptors a little bit more once I get to my, mo my uh, rookie of the year picks. But I think they have a lot of players that are similar mode and similar positions. And yeah, it could definitely work. But the fact that Pascal Siaka might miss the first month of the season, I think that opens the game up more for OG Ananobi to get on players' maps. And to win most improved player, in my personal opinion, you have to get on the map pretty early. You have to get on the map in the first month of the season, average about 20-something out of nowhere, and then people start thinking about you. And then the casual fan, once they stop watching, they still thinking about you for, for uh, most improved player because when they was watching, you was doing your thing. And everybody's watching the first month of the season, so you got to come out the gate and actually hoop. So here's my sleeper number one, and I looked at the Spurs roster. Somebody has to score. <laughs> Somebody has to score. The team is not going to average 70 points per. So the guy I picked is a guy that played for Team USA. Y'all know they always get that Olympic bump. And that will be Keldon Johnson. How much would he jump up to? I don't really know. But I think Keldon Johnson is a super, super quality NBA player. The only thing I worry about with him is I think he would have to take a huge, huge jump because he is playing in San Antonio. And at this point in their, their franchise, they are a rebuilding team. And I don't know if a lot of people are watching. So he would have to elevate his play to a crazy amount for people to start watching the Spurs this year. Now, number three on my list is Jordan Poole. I already mentioned it. In the preseason, he looked amazing. With Klay Thompson being out with his injury, it looks like Jordan Poole is going to take the responsibility of taking a lot of shots, which is dope. I think he can win it. But I got him third because of the thing I mentioned earlier. I legitimately think, and I, I mean, it could be different this year, Year. But if you look at all of the previous winners other than CJ McCollum, <laughs> but he didn't, CJ went from like seven points per game to 21. It was crazy. He just got more opportunity. Um, every one of these players went from a good NBA player that everybody knew to a player that was an all star and in some cases, all NBA. So my top two guys are players in that mold. These are players that we all know are really good NBA players, but which one of the players can elevate the most? And the first one is Michael Porter Jr. On my podcast, we were talking about this, and somebody mentioned Michael Porter Jr. for most improved player, and I said to, I said to them, it's like, I don't know, because he already averaged 19 points per game. 
on like 50% shooting and 40% from three? How much better can he get? And the answer is he could probably jump up to 25 points per game. And if he's averaging 25 points per game, Jokic is still doing MVP caliber things. They're going to be in the playoff contention once All-Star game comes around, and he's going to get some votes. He's going to get some votes. You never know how the season goes. Somebody get injured and boom, there's an extra open spot in the Western Conference. So I think he might be second on my list. It might be a generic answer because I think a lot of people understand that Michael Porter Jr. is going to score a lot of points this year. But I honestly do believe it as well. And my number one pick might be wild because I think everybody knows that this player is great. He averaged like 19 points per game last year. He led his team to the playoffs even though his second best player only played 11 regular season games. It's John ja Morant. And my thought is, John Morant blossoms into superstardom. And that is why I believe he could be the most improved player. Year number three for a lot of guards is the year where they blossom to, to the max. And I think that can happen with John Morant this season. So that is my pick for most improved player. Buckle in. I told you I was going to be wild. Ladies. I told you it was going to be wild. Let's talk about rookie of the year. Um... I told y'all last year, I got everything wrong except for Jokic. My pick for rookie of the year last year was Killian Hayes. It was Killian Hayes last year. I don't want to be burned this year, so I went maybe a little bit more safe this year than previous years. My sleeper picks, um, Scotty Barnes, I think might... Is this crazy to say? He's going to be one of the top two players in this draft class, in my personal opinion. Just, just projecting careers and who can do what. I think he has all the tools in his bag to be great. And I didn't know anything about Scotty Barnes when he was drafted, but I watched pre, uh, Summer League and I watched preseason. I think he does a little bit of, of everything right now. And every single year, a player like that can progress or... Or he could, could plateau, which happens to a lot of players that can do a little bit of everything. But I, I think he has a spirit. He he has a fa the fan support to blossom into a star. But I have him in sleepers because I do believe there are a lot of players on this team that do similar things. Whether it be OG Ananobi, whether it be Pascal Siakam. Um, they have so many people around him. And when it comes to rookie of the year, in my opinion, it's usually a guy that's given the keys and say, hey, take the shots you want. Go get some buckets. All right. So he is a sleeper. I got Trey Murphy as a sleeper. He was stellar in preseason and in summer league. Some of that has to transition over. And with um, Zion Williamson missing some time early on, he might get a little bit of buzz if he goes out there and he shoots 50% from three. And my biggest sleeper is Jared Butler. Don't have to talk about it. I'm just saying, if you don't know the name, you got to tune in because that boy was hooping. Now, let's get to my actual top three. Number three on this list is Jalen Suggs. And I really wanted to pick Jalen Suggs to win the award, but I look at their roster. I see Markel Folks coming back eventually. I see um, Cole Anthony getting some run at the guard position. I see RJ Hampton. I see Gary Harris. There are so many guards that deserve minutes on their team. I just don't know how many shots Jalen Suggs is going to be able to put up um, in Orlando, but I really like the homie Jalen Suggs and his odds. Um, next, we have... Cade Cunningham. You know it's going to be one and two. Which one did I have one? Which one did I have two? And I don't know what's necessarily going on with Jalen, uh, with um, Cade Cunningham and his injury. I don't know if he's going to be out for a couple days. He's going to be out for a couple weeks. And momentum is everything in the NBA. And I think that the winner of this award is Jalen Green. He's going to put up ridiculous stats. There's nobody that's taking the ball out of his hands other than Kevin Porter Jr. And already it seems like those two players like playing together. And Kevin Porter Jr. is a very willing passer. I think Jalen Green is going to take a ton of shots and hit a ton of shots. But I can also see it going similar to what happened last year where you have the guy that gets a bunch of buckets. That would be Jalen Green slash Anthony Edwards. And you have the guy that's like, okay, I'm going to come into this organization and immediately become the leader. That could be the LaMelo Ball, Cade Cunningham. We shall see. Only difference is that LaMelo Ball led his team to a playing spot and was like a top seed at one point. I don't think the Detroit Pistons are doing this this year, but who really knows? Defensive player of the year. Last year, I picked Bam out of bio. I was wrong there. Like I said, I got a lot of things wrong. I don't really have sleepers for this one. I feel like getting your name into the conversation of great defenders is hard. Like, yeah, people that watch the game of basketball can be like, oh, that's a really good defender. But for you to get the reputation of as a good defender is hard. It takes a lot of media buzz from like people that is actually watching and, and writing articles and stuff. Nobody comes into the scene randomly like, oh, that's that guy's a defender now? You have to build that reputation. With that being said, I don't believe that um, Rudy Gobert is going to win Defensive Player of the Year this year. I think he's going to have amazing defensive statistics. But let me show you something. Rudy Gobert is now tied right now for the second most Defensive Player of the Years in the career. Do you honestly believe the voters are going to put him on the level of Ben Wallace and Dikembe Mutombo? I don't think they will. I don't think they will. And again, the opinion about 
Rudy Gobert is lower now than it's ever been. So I don't think he repeats and get that fourth title. I don't think it's going to happen. My number three pick in this award is Joel Embiid. Um, a lot of people give Ben Simmons a credit for defense. Of course, he deserves it. He's an amazing defender. But I think because Ben Simmons is such a great defender at the point of attack, that people don't really realize how good of a defender Joel Embiid is protecting the rim. And if Ben Simmons is not going to play or he's going to play 30 games with them, yada, 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 more people might realize how good of a defender Joel Embiid is on the backside, and I think that might give him some Defensive Player of the Year buzz. Second is going to be Draymond Green. The Warriors are going to be better than they were last year, in my opinion, and that means that more people are going to realize that Draymond is still a good defender, and he just finished top three last year. But my winner of this award, I'm doubling down on Bam Adebayo. I picked him last year, and if he don't win it this year, I'm never picking you again, Bam. It was hard to narrow down and not put Giannis or, or Anthony Davis on this list because um, I do believe those players definitely have a good chance, but I narrowed it down to just my three. Bam, do not disappoint me. I did. I think that the Miami Heat are going to have one of the best defensive teams in the league, and you have to pick somebody, right? They're, not, they're probably not going to pick the wing and Jimmy Butler. They're going to pick the rim-protecting dude that can switch onto guards and do a little bit of everything, and that's Bam Adebayo. And now it is the pick you've been waiting for, the M V. P. Now, when I think about most valuable player, um, majority of the time is going to a guy that's on one of the top two to three seeds in a conference. Um, we have some anomaly years. Russell Westbrook averaging a triple-double, even though they won a top seed. It was historic year. He got it. But for the most part, it's going to one of the guys that is on one of the greatest, greater teams in the league. Because, I mean, if you are the most valuable player to your team, your team is going to be good. And, and voting is different every single year. Sometimes you get the Steve Nash pick, which is not like the guy that's not going to have the amazing statistics, but like advanced stats love him and his team was super solid. So there has been a disconnect between what MVP is versus who really deserves it, yada, 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 yada. Because you can argue LeBron James has been the most valuable player for the last decade, but he don't win it every single year. There's voter fatigue. There's a lot of different stuff. So my sleeper picks, and I mean, my first pick is really a sleeper and it's Jason Tatum. It is Jason Tatum. Um, and that is really contingent on the fact that um, if the Boston Celtics are really, really good. It would have to be because of Jason Tatum. The next one is uh, Joel Embiid. Um, he does have the narrative part of his season down pack, but I just, I still believe that since Ben Simmons is there, there's a little bit of turmoil there and they might not be as good, even if Ben Simmons does play or if he doesn't play, and that might prevent him from snagging one of the top two seeds. He was one of the finalists last year and I think he could do it again, but it's just a different scenario now. And the last sleeper pick I have is Luka. Luka's got a lot of MVP love and it makes sense. He's one of the top seven, ten, five, whatever number player in the league. But I've mentioned this like 10 times this off season and I hope they make me swallow my words, but I don't believe in the, the surrounding pieces around him to be one of the top seeds in the league. And again, I do believe you have to be one of the top seeds in the league. Now I'm narrowing it down to my top three. I think that there's a possibility that Jokic repeats. Um, I do believe that they're going to be a quality NBA team and they're still going to be one of the top teams in the conference. I mentioned Michael Porter Jr. as being an MIP candidate. He's going to help them stay afloat. And I do believe that they can still steal, a, maybe not a one seed, a two seed, a three seed, if they can stay healthy outside of Jamal Murray. And Jokic is just a, a freak of nature. Every advanced stat last year pointed that Nikola Jokic deserved that award. And I can see him replicating that type of thing. The narrative behind him? Well, Jamal Murray's out for a significant part of the season, and he still was great, and they still were great. My number two pick is Kevin Durant. The fact that Kevin Durant only has one MVP award in, under his um, in his trophy case has to maybe rub him a little bit because I think they had this whole campaign when he was early in his career that's like, not number two or tired of being number two. And it feels like for, for majority of his career, he's felt like the second best player in the league, which is great, but he's always wanted to be number one. This might be a year where he cements himself as the best player in the league. He's going to be on the Brooklyn Nets who are going to be amazing. And though they have a bunch of different options, Kevin Durant is the guy. But my pick, my number one pick is Giannis. And we talked about that in the video like two nights ago. Um, so if you missed that one, I highly, highly recommend it. Whew. Executive of the year? Executive of the year, our tour is Cardi Chauvis because the Bulls are going to tear some people up this season. So those are my picks. Some of them a bit wild. Yes, indeed. But what type of video would it be on this channel if I wasn't being wild? Let me know what you think. What your, well, let me know what your picks are. Again, shout out to Prize Picks. I, I really want y'all to download the app. And what I want y'all to do is when you are making your, your, um, your picks, tweet them at me. 